All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is March 8th, probably March 9th by the time I'm finished this. <laughs> it's a, a later one again, but this one wasn't my intention. Uh, as you know, I've been saying we've got this project in the back end that we're working on. Hopefully we can be done in one more week. Uh, obviously we're at a deadline. Um, but more than that, my computer uh, just keeps freezing on me. It, it was fine all day until time for the video. Uh, kind of like just this past uh, Saturday. We were on with uh, Mike over at uh, Interrupts165 and those guys. And... My computer froze. I had to pre-warn them ahead of time it might happen. And boom, it happened in the middle of the live show. Um, it, there's some information here maybe that uh, somebody's trying to prevent. And it just keeps coming. I was working all day in the same place on the same computer. Everything was fine until I come to this video. It, it's happening <laughs> twice now. But all the in-between is fine. It's only at video time. And uh, I've never had so much struggle and headache with this before. But to let you guys know, today we're going to talk about a, a couple pieces. I'm going to, in in the second part, I'll talk, uh, and not, not even the second part, well, the first part won't be too long. Um, but the first part is going to be the count for Jerusalem. I'm going to show you something in relation to this count, and it's really fun because you know, we talk a lot about Israel and we know everything's connected to the 70th. However, there's punishment for what they did for 50 years. The 49th and then the 50th in disobedience. And then, well, then there's got to be punishment. Now the judgment has to come. So he gives them the 49. They didn't do the seven times seven years that they should have for the land of rest since they had Jerusalem. Then, but but that forty nine times uh, seven times seven for forty nine years is connected to the fiftieth. It's the count to the jubilee. So he gives them the jubilee, and then you would think, well, now it's got to start. But you're going to see something we've discussed before, but never the final year. And it's it's funny because uh, I know Mike and Amish, uh, you know, those guys call it this past year has been like the year of dung, right? They call it the year of dung. However, we had never put it together where this year of dung had to be after an extension of three years already. Remember, we know that when they come into the land, okay? But there's this additional year. Now, would you say, well, is it Israel? Is it Jerusalem? I'm going to show you how it's revealed in the scripture. And then we're going to talk about something a lot of people uh, are, are are contacting me about a lot more lately and it's a it's a it's kind of a hot topic right now because there's a lot of people that have this sense especially knowing what we know uh, we can't help but think maybe the Lord is preparing some people and so we're gonna discuss that a little bit more today that maybe even a lot more with uh, quite a bit of detail in depth I'm going to bring up uh, an old uh, a, a thing I used to talk about a while ago, but I haven't shared it in a long time, but I've, I've mentioned it. And that's a guy's prophetic dream vision that he had back in 1993, uh, Armin Wolf. And somebody had just shared it with me, you know, it would be a good idea to bring that up. And it was a good idea. I was thinking about it in the previous video and uh, I never did. I wasn't ready to bring it up when I thought about it either. So I figured, you know what, this will be a good time because we're going to we're going to spend some time in this. We're going to see if we can maybe get a little bit of understanding if there's this difference with John's group. You know, are, are they going to stay through seals? Are they are, are they just staying through through the 40 days? And I am not going to be giving you solid evidence on this, but I'm going to make some points within it because it's very difficult to see uh, scripturally. A group, whether they stay longer or shorter, I mean, longer, yes, we can see it. But whether there's also this group that's only here for a 40-day period. So we're going to do our best to, to put it through in scriptures and show a group that does stay longer. Show a group that's connected to 24,000 people, which is two sets of 12. All right, two sets of 12,000. I've talked about them a long time ago. I'm going to bring those guys back into the picture. And it's recorded history. 
And I'm going to show how there's a group that in scripture is related as putting their necks on the line. So I'm going to tie this all into this, this group separate from the 144,000 that will get sealed at, at the end of seals, of course, and will work trumpets. We're not talking about them, but we're talking about the two missing people, which is uh, Dan and Ephraim. Okay, so we're, we're going to get into that as well and just kind of see if we can make the picture at least a little bit more clear as to these groups working and 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 make this connection to this uh to this John group and those who received the the Holy Ghost immediately. All right? So let's get started. As usual, everybody knows I'm going to do this every time. Anybody that's new to this ministry, I promise you you must come watch these videos. The entire ministry is based on the revelation of these videos. Everything changed for me on September 8th, 2017, when suddenly I realized this connection between Luke 21's discourse and what was going on in Revelation chapter 12, 1, 1 through 5, wasn't making sense as to the rapture being pre-trib when everybody was showing it was after her travailing in pain in verse 5, because it was the was caught up. So it didn't make sense. And that was where the whole journey began. And how it started was because of Luke. And I started looking into this, why these differences were going on. And boof, everything started to open. And ever since these last three and a half years has been following the revelation, following the book's opening, just following where the spirit leads me. I, I 99% of the time don't go in with a plan. I just start studying. I'm watching something like in scripture. I'm, I'm seeking something and then something catches my attention and I start seeking it more and then it starts to open up. And that's what I do. And this video right here, the intro to the gospels revealed, the end time gospels revealed. It's a 30 minute video. Those, the ones that have printouts, you can go in the description box. You can print them out or download them for yourselves you're going to understand there was a reason why each gospel speaks differently. Each gospel, in relation to the synoptic gospels in particular, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in the end days, the last shall be first and the first shall be last, it goes Luke, Mark, and Matthew. And Luke is speaking to the bride of Christ. Mark is speaking to the left behind sleeping church. And Matthew is speaking to Judah. When you understand, once you see this and you begin to understand in this introduction, you're going to say, oh my goodness, now that starts to make sense. I get, I get emails every single week of people who suddenly it opens up and they begin to understand questions that they've had for, for decades that go back generations become revealed. And so does this second one. This second one is called the 14 years. This introduction to the end time years is when you realize who the gospels, that's why the Lord revealed this to me first and then revealed to me that the end of days was not one set of seven years, but two sets of seven years. Remember the word, the Lord, it's six years and the seventh rest, six years and the seventh rest, six days, seventh rest, 6,000 years and the seventh is rest. Okay. You realize that it could have never been seven years because of how the Lord works it in the first place. It's six and the seventh rest. So this will open up your eyes and you will understand why this first one is so important to give you the understanding in the second one. Because we've all been taught from the Gospel of Matthew, we've missed why Mark was even there. We've used Mark as a reference. We've been told it's just a reference of a different perspective. It's not. It's not just another perspective in, in the is on and how to live and how it was connected when those things happen. It is literally speaking to a different group. And that's why there were literal things that you would say must be contradictions. They're not contradictions. It's because of who they're speaking to and when. And when you understand that, you'll realize that because we've been taught in this video, it will explain because we've been taught all of our lives from Matthew, 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 we only see from the perspective of Judah. 
all right? We've missed the perspective of the church, the sleeping church, the church perspective, which is Mark. So half of it's been missed. So that's why the whole church that studies end times will say, well, most of the people will say it's pre-trib and the whole church goes. Well, that's because they're looking at Matthew. So it, it'd be like that they're, en- that they're at the end of Mark, the very end of Mark's chapter. And if you were at the end of Mark's chapter and everything you knew was, was Matthew, you would say 144,000 sealed and the rapture of the whole church. Well, that would be correct. Because everything that comes next is Matthew, which is trumpets time. But because we've missed the understanding of Mark, they've missed that it is two sets of seven. And that that seven for Mark is the sleeping church tribulation of seals. Luke's group goes first. Luke's group goes at the beginning and it will be at the end of March this year. All right. I'm not going to go into all that, but these are so important. You want to understand a little bit more about the 40 days that the bride goes about, leaves at first? Come and watch this video. You really want to understand pre, mid, and post? You really want to watch this video. This video is going to blow your mind. But you must first understand these two. And this one will help you understand how these two were missed all these years. All right? So, with that out of the way, I shouldn't say out of the way because it's important. Some of the most important you'll understand if you want to understand end time scripture. Let's now go have a look at the calendars. You see, I told you my computer was messed up because I had to reboot it again. And so I thought I'm not going to waste any time this time. I'm going to just get that video started. Now, I'm going to start this portion with um, uh, 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 Jerusalem. Now, we've spoken about Israel many times. Right, We know that there's the 70-year count right, to fulfill the 70 years. And listen to what it says. We've talked about uh, 2 Chronicles 36 a lot. It's very important to talk about, man. It's, it's the entire beginning, the time frame to, re- to reveal the end of days. And you see, some might say that, you know, uh, uh, Israel won't be attacked the first time until, you know, after March. You know, maybe into May, maybe into June, maybe some people think. I disagree. You see this Zedekiah? I've talked about it many times. Zedekiah's name was changed from Metanyahu to Zedekiah. Metanyahu, who sounds a lot like Netanyahu, is still in his 11th year. He's in his 11th year until the end of, uh, until March, I think, 29th. And then on the 30th, it's the anniversary of his 12th year. So I personally believe the first attack on Israel is going to come during his reign, which means we've got days. And I I made a comment to somebody the other day. Remember this video here. I bring it up regularly. And the reason I do is because it was shared with me on the evening of March 10th into the 11th of 2020 with my confirmation of of the number 50, and then tribulation was going to begin, the 14 years. I thought it related to last year. The Lord had me keep the video with an incredible confirmation directly from the Holy Spirit in brackets that said right on target. I mean, it was fascinating. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. And I'm so grateful to my sister Jodell, our sister who did, who, who, who revealed that, who received that as an intercessor for me. Well, in that, She connected this video and this video was given to me and and I saw it and it was like one, I think it was like one o'clock in the morning on March 11th. You guys all know that this video talks about they would release a flu-like virus on China. China would catch a cold. People would be really dying from it. But then China, they would say caught a cold and then it would spread to the Western nations The Western nations would go into lockdown and it would become a global pandemic. That's literally spoken about in this video from 2010, proving that it was planned. Okay, yes, it's real, but it was planned. The other thing that was planned in this 
which is why I know, and when she explained to me how she came across this video, how it happened that the Lord had her send it to me with that, with that confirmation, with that interceding that she did for me, it, it's fantastic. And in this, he also talks about how Israel and Iran will have a short, limited nuclear war exchange, and then it'll be followed by World War III breaking out. Well, this was given to me, and we know that about 12 hours later, it was declared a global pandemic after China caught a cold and it spread throughout the earth. Hello. All right. Big deal. So what, what has been going on in this past year? We're what, three days, almost two, two to three days away from the anniversary of when I received this. You know, this, this whole thing of, of a dung year that I'm going to share with you guys in a bit. I believe that we are going to see this before Netanyahu, Zedekiah Netanyahu, his 11 years are done. I believe the reason I received that was not only to give me the confirmation once I understood that there was this year still to go. Once we understood, you know, not till uh, I think it was August of last year, that this there was this additional adding of three years when they come into the land. Well, we know that adding into the land was connected to 70 years. And we know when we've talked about it before, when we add three years to when Israel came into the land, right? When you add three years, when they came into the land, the count didn't begin until spring of 1951. Okay? There's this three years. Because look, the Lord God knew the count was going to be three years off or, or three years when they got back into the land, which was going to be in the midst of a cycle. And there's your beginning of your 70 count. You follow it up. And where are we? We are in this right now. When does this 70th year end? A year goes from spring to spring. So it is about to end. Now, when I say spring to spring, I'm not saying it's uh, uh, um, uh, at, the, at, the, at the equinox. I believe the spring to spring is related to Pentecost, by the way. I believe that the Lord God counts from Shabuah, as Mike likes, from Shabuah to Shabuah, from, from Pentecost to Pentecost, from a uh, 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 feast of weeks to feast of weeks. That is where the Lord God counts from. And I could prove it by the fact of that confirmation I received when the revelation was 50, 14, 50. It'll be 50 days. The 14 years will begin. When the 14 years are over, it will be the final jubilee of the count of the last 6,000 years. All right? What I'm sharing today is Jerusalem's count. And Jerusalem's count, for Jerusalem to have been disobedient for 50 years, the punishment is going to have to line up with the time frame of the end of 70 years. But for that to happen, there must be some sort of explanation for us in Scripture. So you see, this will begin the first year of tribulation. You can almost say like if you point to the, the bottom of 2021 as like a row under 2021. That would be day one, Pentecost, Holy Spirit comes, gives them the power, and boom, the tribulation will begin. That will happen this year at True Pentecost. But there's a 50-day period prior to, all right? And this is the stuff we've been talking about over the last little while. So if this is truly the 70th year, which we've now proven, we have absolutely proven it's the 70th year, look at what it says here. First of all, like we said, we know it's connected to Netanyahu's time in his 11th year. So I think that attack's going to happen because we know it's going to happen in the above portion, the first attack. Well, 
Listen to what it says in relation to 70 years. Second uh, Chronicles 36, 21. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. For as long as she, she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. Well, <laughs> let me ask you something. How is it that the fulfilling of Sabbath is connected to 70 years when the punishment is related for failing to have observed a jubilee of years for the Sabbath years of rest. So what it's telling us is that this coming end of 70 must also be connected to the coming end of 50 somehow. But if you look at the count, you'd say, okay, well, 1948, we can see that. Well, you add three, and that brings us to 2021, 70 years later. But if you add three to 1967, when Israel became a nation, uh, uh, sorry, when uh, Israel captured Jerusalem in the Six-Day War, Okay, from the 5th to the 10th is the 6th day war. It started on the 5th, ended on the 10th, 6 days. The ceasefire was signed and the deal was done on June 11th. So on June 11th, Jerusalem became theirs. So if you say, okay, 1967 to 68 is one year, to 69. So to June 11th of 1970, we added the three years. Okay, why do we add the three years? We've shared this here. Leviticus 19. And when you shall come into the land, okay, when you shall come into the land and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then you shall count the fruit, the fruit thereof uncircumcised. Okay, kind of like Gentiles, right? There should be this, there's a connection here to Gentiles. Three years, it shall be uncircumcised unto you it shall not be eaten of. And in the fourth year, all the fruit, like all the manner of trees, shall be, uh, uh, therefore shall be holy to, to praise unto the Lord for all. So that means after three years, all that fruit is holy to the Lord. Well, when we showed this in relation to the 70 years for Israel, we can understand that the end of these 70 years with the addition of the three when they came into the land equals this year, this spring, it ends. Meaning the Lord, knowing this, of course, knew how it was going to land, and that's why the count didn't begin till spring of 51. Okay, you guys following that? But we have this portion of all manner of trees. So all the trees and all the fruit of those trees. Well, what about Luke? When we go to Luke chapter 21 in our trusted Esword, we see this all manner of trees, right? The lesson of the fig tree. And he spake unto them a parable Behold the fig tree and all the trees. Only Luke's discourse says all the trees. Mark says her tree and Matthew says his tree. All three of them different. As I said, you watch that first video, you'll, be un you'll begin to understand the reason for these differences. So behold the fig tree. And all the trees. Let me ask you a question. Who's the fig tree? The fig tree isn't a part of all the trees. The fig tree is on its own. This is all the trees. See, we got a comma and. So it's a separation and addition together. So you got fig tree and every other tree. Well, who, are, who do trees represent? People. Who did all the trees represent? Israel and the church, right? Remember the Gentiles got grafted in? This is all the trees. 
and this is the fig tree. Who's who's the reference of the fig tree? Jerusalem, Judah, or the Jews. This is Israel and all, but it's all those ready, and this is Judah. It relates to Jerusalem. So when we're reading here in Leviticus, was it Leviticus? Yeah, in Leviticus 19, look at what it says again. All manner of trees for food shall you count thereof, uncircumcised three years, uncircumcised, all manner of trees, yet no mention of the fig tree. Now, I do believe the fig tree is, is assumed, you could say, that it's connected in there. But all manner of trees that we just read in Luke was separate, right? All the trees were separate from the fig tree. Now, understand, what we're trying to discern here is how the 70 years are connected to the land enjoying her Sabbaths which is not connected to 70. It's connected to 50. Okay? So now, this one we've understood, and we've broken it down. It's the one that relates to Israel. Well, now look at what we get here. When we go into Leviticus 25, Leviticus 25, we read the Sabbath years, right? Six years you work. The seventh year is a Sabbath year of rest for the land. Since Israel has had Jerusalem, they have not observed this land of rest. All right? Whose land does Jerusalem belong to? It belongs to God. Does all of Israel, people say, well, the whole world belongs to God. Yes, of course. I know the whole world does. Everything is his. But Jerusalem is where his name is. It is his. In fact, it's so much his that after you see the, the conversation of the Sabbath year of rest, which Jerusalem is supposed to take, the land is supposed to rest, which they have not yet once done since they had it. It goes on to tell us about the Jubilee count, which is seven times seven of these, okay? Which is the Jubilee is then the 50th year. So every seven out of the 49, they were supposed to allow the land to rest. They did not. And then in the 50th year, it rests again, and the Lord would provide those additional three years. Did you hear that? The Lord would then provide the additional three years. And look what the Lord tells them. In verse 25, Leviticus 25, sorry, verse 23. And the land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and sojourners with me. Jerusalem, as we all know, his name is written there in the in the what is it, in the flow of the through the mountains and, and the rivers. They it, it's the Lord God's name is written there. It is his land. Leviticus even tells us it's his land, but they've been disobedient in it. So if one is the fig tree. And the other is all the other trees. Then maybe when looking at Leviticus 19 and discerning that that's relating more to the 70 year count in relation to all the trees. We need to find. A count. For the fig tree, do we not? You guys know where I'm going with this. Luke 13. You see, I've pointed to Luke 13 in relation to this right here. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard. This word G, 289. 
You see, this is how I found this revelation that we needed to add seven year, uh, uh, three years. And then one of the uh, one of our brothers sent me the, uh, 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 the the scripture that said, yes, in fact, they needed to hold off three years in the land. But that was relating to Israel. All right. The 70 years of Israel plus three. We need a Jerusalem plus three. All right. And so when I wanted to sh- what I want to show you here was it me it it's the Greek number 289. And the U- the Lord used this to catch my attention. It's only used one time and I knew I had heard this number before or had seen this number before. And what happened is when we added up all the Sabbath years that should have been rest since Christ I had her brother Ivan put this together for me because I said, if I counted right, there have been 289 Sabbath years, including this one we're in right now. And look at what's happened. What has this last year been? A Sabbath year of rest and a very, very specific one for the Lord to say to Israel, which is the world. Right. The multitude that's out there because they 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 grafted in with Gentiles to say, hey, here is your year of rest in the 70th. The land is at rest. Everybody is at rest. Everything is slowed down. The 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 sports and the in the and the movies and all these things, everything is slowed down. Spend some time with me, says the Lord. And it was 200 and 89 Sabbaths since Christ. And the vineyard and the scripture that spoke about the additional three years was literally where the word 289 was used once. That was awesome. And that was the revelation that gave us the, oh, thank you, Lord. Now we can understand. Now we have understood where the true 70th is and we're in it right now and it will end this spring. You see? However, there's more to this story. And this is where I said before that Mike and Amish, when they had spoken about this and they say, you know, it's been like a year of dung for sure. You know, I think it was it was more in, in a fun sense because... The year of dung is the fourth year. And I don't know of any understanding that we had in relation to the fourth year. Look at who this was written to. The fig tree. The fig tree. Not all the trees. No circumcised in relation to uncircumcised in relation to those. The fig tree. The story here is only speaking about the fig tree. So the Lord helped me with this to realize there was three years for the 70 as well, which we then came to understand in the proper scripture in Leviticus 19. But this one is written to the fig. It is not written to all the trees. And what happens to the fig tree? Well, same thing as what happened to Israel. When you come into the land, three years must be added. They received and came into that land. It was now theirs on June 11th, 1967. Add three years, spring, right? June of 1970. Now, let me show you this calculation. Check this out. June June 11th, 1970. Okay, that was the three years. We add 50. Why do we add 50? Because God's land, right? God's land. The land is mine was the story of what? The Jubilee. 
the Jubilee for Jerusalem. So what did he allow them to do? He gave them their 49 to 49, uh, 49, right? The seven times seven to see if they would be obedient. He gave them the 50th. Why? Because the cycle had to be completed. But let me ask you something. If you add 50 years to 1970, the 50th year ended June 11th, 2020. It ended last year in June. You following? So the count is off. It is not a jubilee for Jerusalem. It is not the jubilee for your year for Israel. It is not the jubilee year for the 6,000. That one we know the clearest when the Lord returns and then the final jubilee. We know that one crystal clear. But I had never really spent much time in the Jerusalem one. I just, I just looked at it as I'm sure many of you did and said, well, we understand the 70th one. So we know the reason for their punishment is because they haven't been obedient with having the, the seven times seven and the 50th for the Jubilee. We, we essentially know that relates to Jerusalem. Otherwise, they couldn't have even got to 70 with Israel because the punishment had to come after 50. So how could they have gone to 70? Because this is Israel. The rest is the Jerusalem portion. All right, so how is it that we could be coming to the end of the 70th and the 71st is when begins the 14 years, yet at the same time not be in the 50th, but in the 51st? So that means to complete 51 would be by June of 2021 we're in the 51st year right now we're in the 51st year of jerusalem since they had it with the addition of three years why because exactly what it tells us here to the fig tree only behold these three years i come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also. It might be hard to see, but it says this year also. Till I dig it about and dung it. Okay? And dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Okay? Then thou shalt cut it down. When is Israel, when is Jerusalem to be attacked? Towards the end of the 70th of Israel and after the 51st for Jerusalem. Do you understand? Let me show you something here. Let me see if I'm following my, my kind of following my notes. You see here, we said all the trees. Well, let me show you something else we know from, uh, from Luke 21. Watch this. Luke 21. We've got both given to us here. We've got all the trees, which relates to Israel in the world. But we've got also the reference of the fig tree. What happens to Jerusalem, the fig tree? Do you remember? Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, great earthquakes, fearful sights, famines, pestilence, great signs. This is the beginning of seals. The beginning to the about first half of seals. But in Luke 21 only, It says, but before all these, before these things begin, what do we know about Luke? There is a portion of time 
where the Son of Man will be here for 40 days. We know that the 14 years doesn't begin till the 50th day. The Holy Ghost comes and leaves, and then the 14 years begins. This is a portion of time called but before that time, okay? But before all these. We'll see. We're going to talk about this in a moment. You'll see that there's there's something that changes in the world. Well, of course it's going to change. Even before the 14 years literally begins, that period of time from the escape and the 40 days to the 50th is going to be some very difficult times. And it's not even the tribulation yet. Of course, it's going to be difficult, man. Tens of millions of people will have vanished. Right? That's why in Jesus, in Luke 17, says that his days when he's going to be rejected and persecuted and suffer many things, he says his days will be as it was in the days of Noah. The 40 days when it said until they entered the ark and the flood began. He relates his 40 days in Luke to being crazy like it was in the flood. You see, it's going to be crazy. And I'm going to show you some of this when we talk about this, this possibility in, in, of timing. Like I said, it's, it's not the easiest thing to, to fully discern. And I'm, I don't fully have it. But Luke 21 helps give us greater insight with Scripture as to this period of time and people. But look at what happens. We've discussed a, a while ago. We haven't talked about it in a little while. But these are the things that are going to happen during the 40 days. And then it says, And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, Israel? Or all the trees? No. Jerusalem. What's Jerusalem? The fig. Jerusalem's the fig. Right? The fig tree. When you see Jerusalem, the fig tree compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh, and let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. And See, this is all part and parcel with the 40-day warning of the Son of Man. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. This is now the beginning. This is... This is I mean, not only the beginning, but it's still even before the, the 14 years. <coughs> but the attack, I should say, sorry, for Jerusalem, I believe the attack for Jerusalem will be at the end of the 50 days. When the tribulation begins, I believe that will probably be right in that time frame of that second attack. Remember, there's an attack in Israel. I don't believe that the first attack will affect Jerusalem. Okay? I believe the first attack between Israel and Iran, as we see heating up like crazy, while the world says, oh, it's just another, they're just talking again. No, it's not. Not when you know what we know. Not when you understand the season and time we're in. This is not just chitter chatter and, and going at it again. This is the real deal. You see, but this portion of Jerusalem is not connected to this first attack as we read over in 2 Chronicles 36. If 2 Chronicles 36 is truly the indicator, is truly telling us a piece of end times, I believe the first attack against Israel must happen before Netanyahu would observe 12 years. Okay? So this is why you see, so when they're going to be fleeing, look at what it says. The desolation thereof is nigh. Meaning during the 40 days, that attack on Jerusalem will not happen. It would have to be a period of time shortly after the 40 days that will be right around the time when the tribulation begins. Okay, right to right around that Pentecost time. So we know that Israel, their 14 years, right? Or sorry, yeah, their 14 years. If you look at Israel when they turned 71, we've got it as May 14th on the calendar, right? 
So we're looking at an attack before then. And Jerusalem, the second attack, I believe would be before this connection to June 11th. But I'm going to show you something with that connection to June 11th as well. Okay? And then you can see now everything's going to break out, and this is when it's all going to begin. Let me show you something. Remember I said uh, this was shared with me by a brother as well. We're talking about Israel and Iran going at it again. But this time it will be for real. You can see this. This is from one day ago. See, this is the 8th, but it was posted, you know, over in the Middle East. And Iran is threatening to turn Tel Aviv and Haifa into ashes. Why didn't they say Jerusalem? Jerusalem's their people. They, uh, it, part of it is a bunch of is Arabs and, and Muslims there, right? So they're not looking to take out to, uh, uh, Jerusalem. They said Tel Aviv and Haifa. I find that very, very interesting. It's falling in line with these things that we're talking about. Because Jerusalem is what would be surrounded next after the first attack. We know America and, and a lot of the Western world is already going to be so incredibly devastated by the, the meteors and everything that are coming before Passover. Right? By March 26th. We will either see them coming in the sky or they will already be breaking through and hitting the earth by March 26th this year. We say that because we've proven it with scripture. When the Lord will cast the first stone, when he's a stone's throw away. Did you hear that? The scripture says he's a stone's throw away. <laughs> and in remember in, in John 8, he's the one who can cast the first stone, the one without sin. And, and then the other story in Luke 22, only found in Luke 22, which is the evening of Passover night for Jerusalem. And he's a stone, you get it? <laughs> a stone's throw away. So he's going to throw the first stone because he's the one who's allowed to throw the first stone. And he's following soon behind it because he's only a stone's throw away. <laughs> so awesome. Okay. So this second one, is the Jerusalem one, and I believe the first attack is what's coming first uh, against Israel. And that's how, brothers and sisters, we can have the time that the land of Jerusalem will enjoy her Sabbaths for having failed to be obedient in the seven times seven in the Jubilee count from when they came into the land to add three years and give them one year of dung to see if they would smarten up. And so the seventh year Sabbath of rest that the whole world experienced, which was the relation to, to Israel, is the addition of one year for the fig tree getting dunged to see if they would smarten up. And if not, Thou shalt cut it down. Do you notice something interesting here? I haven't talked about this in a long time. 18, 18 years, 18 years. Three times in Luke 13, you find 18 and 18 years. It's a very strange thing, but I believe I've understood it for a while now. I haven't talked about it in a little bit, though. And it's this right here. We know that before you see see where we are this is where we are right now brothers and sisters this is the period of time we're in and we are in this last little smidgen of time before the eighth begins okay the bride is about to escape as we read in john chapter 7 going into chapter 8 the bride is about to get in the ark before the 40 days begins, or as the 40 days begins, just as we read in Genesis 7, going into 8, the Lord is going to be here as the Son of Man, warning the people like chapter 33, the Son of Man, as Ezekiel is called, right before the 14 years begins, and chapter 18 of Psalms, hence 
18 in the year of their dung is 18, 18, 18 all over the place because it's relating to Psalms 18, which is the devastation that is about to come upon the earth, which is all about what? I know it's rhetorical. I'm, I'm here in my room by myself. <laughs> all right. Which is about what? The meteors and the devastation that comes from Psalms 18. It hasn't happened yet. Do you see that? I didn't make these things fit. They all landed in these things. They all landed in line. And when you go to the other events within these, they all fall in line. How about Exodus 34? It just so happens that in Exodus 34, 22, that's where it says that you shall observe the first fruits of the wheat harvest at the year's end, as we taught in recent videos. And when are they going to observe that? On the 16th day of Nisan, two days after Passover. When is that? Resurrection day. All what? In the last fraction of time, in the seventh year, just as it has shown us over and over, as connected to the three, as connected to the seventh year of rest, as connected to the end of the 70th. Man, if people who have been watching for a while still can't understand, is this really true? Are we really here? I got nothing else. <laughs> I do not know how much more I could show to let you guys know. Be patient and understand we're here. I get people also asking, you know, just to <clears throat> maybe settle some things with some people. Uh, and Well, maybe I shouldn't say settle, but I believe settle. And that is, they say, well, what about the calendar? What if the calendar's wrong? I've said it before and I'll say it again. Every other event so far with the blood moons, the Revelation 12 sign, which is just a sign, all of those things have all happened on the Hebrew calendar. All of them. And you know what's really, this is really interesting. The, the prophecies that the rabbis, uh, uh, those, those prophecies that people have had, right? Uh, um, uh, Yitzhak Kaduri and some of those others through Yitzhak Kaduri. You know, when uh, when uh, the Sea of Galilee would be full, that when it turns out it is full, they've actually had to drain it. Um, and that was a little bit while back. Um, when there's two Benjamins and neither shall win, there was another prophecy within that that I was thinking of sharing the last time too, and I forgot. And that was that they said, and at that time, relating to this time of the two Benjamins, it would also be a time where there would be debate over Sabbaths. How about that? Where there would be debate over Sabbaths. You see? <clears throat> Why is there debate over Sabbaths? Because the true way to count, and all Jews, well, I should say studying Jews or, or observant Jews, you know, they know <laughs> the 14th of Nisan is preparation day. Right? Passover is preparation day. And this is the high Sabbath. It's the 15th, the 22nd, the 29th, the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, the 29th, the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. But they didn't like it. <laughs> they didn't like it because it didn't fit in with a work week as to the way things are now. Does this mean that all of their calendars are off? Or I mean that their calendar is off? No. They've been doing it for thousands of years. I think they, they probably understand their calendar. Do I think 
the calendar will change in the time frame of the end of seals yes i believe with the lord coming at the end of the the sixth seal and and the devastation from it yes i absolutely believe there will be a, a changing in the speed of the sun and in the moon and and so forth that that cycle of them i do believe it will change i do believe it will change to to an enoch calendar again that it'll reset just like this Bible, the Bible tells us, okay, as it was, so shall it be. But we are not in the so shall it be yet, in the sense that until the end of seals, we are still in the Gentile age that is getting grafted in. You follow? We are still in that age until the final grafting is done. And that is at the end of seals when the rapture comes in. The church age is over. And now it's Judah's time. You follow? Very, very important. Let me show you something here with uh, in relation to that count with Jerusalem. Watch this. In 1967, June 11th, okay, there's June 11th. It was the third of Sivan. Okay? It was the third of Sivan. We know that we have to add the three years, 1970. So when we do that and we go to the 50th year, okay, to the end of 50 years, we go to not June 11th, let's go to the Hebrew calendar. The Hebrew calendar for the Jerusalem count. You see that? Go to the Hebrew calendar for the Jerusalem count, and we're looking for the third of Sivan, okay? In 2020, the third of Sivan, check this out. Last year was May 26th, the third of Sivan. Remember this date, May 26th, okay? Third of Sivan, 50 years later, is May 26th. Let's go to 2021. 2021, they're coming now to the end of their fifth, uh, their, their additional year, that year of dung. And so where does the timing land for two things? Let's, let's see where this additional year was given. And let's see where this connection was to the third of Savan. Look at where the third of Savan lands. May 2021. Here's the third of Sivan, the end of the year of Dung, and it's what? May 14th. Hello. Well, how about on the Gregorian calendar? What was it for the Gentile calendar? It was May 26th, remember? It was May 26th. So on the Sivan third, it's May 14th. And one year later, on the Gregorian, it's the one for all the trees you can say, right? What was it? The 15th of Sivan. Why does that matter? <clears throat> because from Passover into Resurrection Day, when the bride is going to vanish, the bride is going to have her wedding week. And what does the scripture tell us? Yes, this is Resurrection Day. Yes, this is Resurrection Day. But we've proven recently that we found the wedding week. We found it, and it was from resurrection, from the evening of this day. And then he returns after eight days. What do the scriptures tell us? Here's, maybe Ivan, you might appreciate this too, that we've, we've wondered and we've tried to understand, you know, why do the Jews put... Uh, uh, um, first fruits why do they count it as being here well let's face it guys this is resurrection day this was clearly resurrection day we've proven it okay we understand it we can clearly prove this is resurrection day so this was first fruits however the count of the feast of weeks says to count from the morrow after the Sabbath from 
the first fruits. So when you count from the morrow after the Sabbath, what they've done is they say, okay, here's the count. So they begin counting the Omer here. When you see the, the uh, Qumran or the old temple scrolls that were found, right? You find out that the count is from the morrow after the following Sabbath. It's not right away on this Sabbath. It's from the morrow after. So this is resurrection day. This is first fruits. But the count to the first fruits or to, to Pentecost, to the, to the Feast of Weeks, doesn't begin here. It's from the morrow after the following Sabbath. This is the following Sabbath. So when you count, what are we looking for? Here's the Sabbath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pentecost. It's not... The, see, the count of Pentecost is in the 50 day. It's you got to count the weeks, the Sabbath weeks. And then what? The 50th. When is tribulation going to begin, brothers and sisters? Right here. Isn't that interesting how the count equaled last year to this year was the 26th of May. And it was the 14th to the 3rd of Savan. I thought that was interesting. I just wanted to throw that. That extra little nugget in there for you. All right, water. <laughs> no coffee at 11.30. I drink enough. So let me share this with you guys now. Now you guys can see this Israel and this Jerusalem count and, and how and why they're connected. How is it that, that Israel's punishment or, or Israel's time of 70 can end and it still be the, the Jubilee and, and, and or the Jubilee extent. Like, how did it all work? That was definitely something that was causing an issue in the back, in the background, right? Saying, well, wait a second. In fact, when I discussed it with people, I wouldn't even say what, Jubil uh, uh, what year it was for Jerusalem. Because I'd be saying, well, 53 and change. You see, it's not Jeremiah to 52 chapters of Jeremiah. We're already finished 53 years of Jerusalem. You follow? So there, there was something that needed more clarity there, and now we've got it. Now, let me share you this guy's dream, and I'm going to make some points with Scripture in it as we go along the way. Like I said, there was the portion of, um, of, uh, of Luke 21. All right? I think we're going to get some good insight here. In Luke 21 and Luke chapter 2. And it's interesting because this conversation of what takes place in this dream from 1993 is about the 40 days. And the language in this, you're going to see for yourselves. I'm not saying this is fact. I'm just saying this one has always had a little something ringing true to me because this this conversation about the 40 days that nobody else is having that's going to come first all right so let's read it the guy's name is i always say amir it's armin wolf it says last night i had a very vivid dream usually i never remember okay we'll skip that <coughs> he says i find i found myself in a meeting with a number of believers the meeting hall looked like some kind of warehouse and there were fewer than 100 assembled. The talk seemed to center on the increasing persecution they were experiencing. Well, that's happening right now, isn't it? In fact, in the province I live in, just a little bit north of me, there's a, a pastor that's in prison because he refuses to say you have to wear a mask and do social distancing. And so he was able to get bail the first time, and the judges let him go, and he just went right back at it. He says, you're not going to stop me. I'm, you're, doesn't, I don't care what you do. I'm going to keep doing what I'm supposed to do. And it's in a smaller town <laughs> or in a small town. And uh, so he got arrested again. And uh, this time the, the judge said no bail. So he's still in prison. Uh, <laughs> needless to say, the prisoners are going to be very surprised when that, uh, when that experience happens. But you see, we all know there's this persecution taking place against the church right now. So this is this has some this has some teeth to it here so far. He says, 
And all of a sudden, Jesus appeared, and most, but not all, were instantly transformed from mortal beings into immortal. Also, at the same instant, some holy ones appeared who walked with God in ages past, both in the New Testament and Old Testament times. Well, that sounds interesting now, too. Because what you're going to find out is this is about the 40 days. Let's go have a look at Luke chapter 2. What is Luke chapter 2 about, brothers and sisters? The 40 days. It's the type and shadow of Christ here for 40 days. That's why it's in Luke chapter 2. Remember, Luke knows all things in order. Chapter 1, 2, 3, 4. The escape, the 40 days of the Son of Man. His return at the end of seals and to begin his ministry to start of trumpets and then his return at the end of trumpets when Satan's going to tempt him. One, two, three, four are the four events of the end of days. Okay? And what do we find here in Luke chapter 2? <clears throat> the Lord, he's born. The 40 days have begun. And look at what happens. There were what? There were shepherds in a field. And the angel of the Lord appears to them and tells them, right? And look at what happens. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts. Praising God and saying, glory to God, the highest and peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us go see. And they now go see Christ on day one. Okay. What does it say? Holy ones appeared unto them. Old Testament saints and New Testament saints. We, there, there's, some, there's some evidence here building. All the ones who had in an instant of time received their new bodies, were able to recognize and converse with the holy ones from times past. I heard someone exclaim, I thought you were coming in the clouds to take us away. The reply was, I am coming in the clouds and my reward is with me. Behold, here they are. My holy ones of all time, my faithful witnesses, those who love not their lives and thus received it, there are the clouds and my reward, and my reward endures forever. Well, how about this? The story of the transfiguration. In the story of the transfiguration in Luke, a cloud descends upon them, and they go into the cloud. That's pretty interesting. Who is it? Moses and Elijah. Some of the what? The old ones? And who was there with them at the eight days? Peter and James, uh, John and James. You got some old ones and some new ones, maybe as a type and shadow. Again, that story in relation to it is Christ coming at his 40 days. That gets really interesting. This has really caught my attention when I read it again today. Then it goes on. I heard another question asked of the Lord by one of the transformed persons whether he would now take them with them uh, out of the tribulation they were experiencing. Remember, because of this persecution that's taking place already in this year with the church, of course. He replied, No, you must remain here for 40 days and 40 nights, just as I was for another 40 days after my resurrection, and minister with me to those who were not ready. What have we been talking about? We've been talking about this, this connection possibility going on with John, right? In John chapter 20, Jesus comes and he gives this group, right? They, they instantly, he breathes on them and they receive the Holy Ghost. This must be a separate group. This cannot be a group that was to the other Gospels because they were told to wait until they be endued with the Holy Ghost, right? In Luke 24. So this group received it. The other group had to wait. 
this might be the connection to this group. This group that may be the ones who are only going to work with the Lord, see, with him for 40 days. Now I ask you again, when have you ever seen anything talk about him, the son of man, the Lord being here for 40 days before the tribulation or at the time of the tribulation beginning? I know of nobody except our ministry. There may be some that believe in, in, in a 40 days that's starting, but not a single one will ever tell you it's with the Son of Man, that the Lord will be here. Well, this did from 1993 in his vision, in his dream vision that he had. This group is going to remain with them and they're going to minister with them. And after the 40 days and nights, you will come with me into the skies above Jerusalem. Remember, we were just looking at Luke chapter at Luke chapter 21. You see, in those 40 days, Jerusalem is still going to be there. Jerusalem is going to get surrounded, but they will not be attacked until some point after the 40 days. And so fitting that they're going to join in Jerusalem and leave from Jerusalem. And we will leave from there and have a celebration, a banquet in my father's house, a feast that has been planned, been planned before the world was made. Now, here's where confusion comes in for people when I shared this in the past. They would say, well, this banquet would already be over. This is at the end of 40 days. This can't be the bride banquet. It's not the bride banquet. You want to see? It's not the bride banquet. We shared this not too long ago. Remember, uh, no, Luke, let's go to it here. Luke chapter 22. I just spoke about this in the previous video. Watch this. Do you remember this? I always love the title. Who is the greatest, right? These guys are like, oh, Lord, who's going to be better? Who's, who's going to be greater out of all of us? It's, it, can you imagine the Lord just shaking his head saying, you idiots. Lord, why did, Father, why did you give me these guys, right? <laughs> So they go on and he's like, look, I'm here. I'm greater than you. I'm serving you as a servant. Those of you who serve shall be greater. And then look what it says. This is what we shared in the last video. Luke 22, 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. How long were the Lord's temptations in this adversity? Right? In the temptation. In what? The testing. How long was this for the Lord? 40 days. 40 days. Let me come back to this in a moment. Let me show you here in Luke 17. <clears throat> in Luke 17, this is one of my favorites. We, we used to talk about it quite a bit. We see here the coming of the kingdom. He's telling them prophetically what's happening here. They're saying, Lord, Lord, uh, you know, is this the time? And he said unto them, he said unto the disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days, see one of the days of the Son of Man. Uh, verse 24, for as lightning that lighteth out of one part under heaven and shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. Singular. He's telling them when he's coming, feet down on the Mount of Olives. And then we see, just like we were reading over in Luke 21, right? Verse 12, over there said, but before all these, here in Luke 17, 25, it says, but first. So this is the end when I come as lightning and the whole world will see me. This is what will come first. You have to understand, guys. He's talking prophetically. Do you understand? He's telling them this is lightning from one end unto the other. We know it's the end of Matthew. That's when he comes in Matthew, at the end. So if he's telling them, but first, then it's got to be something related prophetically to when he's what? Going to suffer many things. You know what? 
experience success, uh, impression, feel, suffer, vex. He's going to suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days, now plural, there's singular, here's plural. It cannot be the same time. But this is the vital part to understand. He's speaking to them prophetically. This had nothing to do with when he was here and then going to fulfill 40 days after he resurrected. It doesn't even make sense. 40 days after his resurrection had nothing to do with the period of tribulation time of 40 days when he resurrected. This is the 40 days, as we've been teaching from the 40-day video, this is the 40 days that the Son of Man said he would be as Jonah was warning the people. Isn't that appropriate? Isn't that exactly what I just showed you here? Before the 14 years begins, what was Ezekiel doing? who is referred to and called the Son of Man? Warning the people in chapter 33. Well, how about that? You see? And he tells us it was as the days of Noah. They did eat, they drank, they married, given in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. He's telling us it will be for 40 days. These are not the reference of the 40 days from his resurrection. He was not suffering. He was not being rejected. It was not a 40 days of warning and, and, and of, and of Noah-type craziness going on on the earth. It was prophetic. See? So what is this but first? But first must he suffer many things. And then what were they just saying? He's, they got to remain with him for 40 days. And look at what it said. Oops. <clears throat> Back in 22, ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. A 40-day putting to trial. What did it say then? What did it next say? And we will leave from there to have a celebration, a banquet in my father's house that's been prepared since before the foundation of the earth. Remember I said it's not the wedding banquet? It says in the following verse, And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me. Well, his kingdom is still up in heaven, right? That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Hello. This sounds like a group that was here with them for 40 days who are going to leave then with them, be given a kingdom in heaven as he is received, and they're going to have a banquet at his table in his kingdom. This is making a lot more sense as months and the last couple of years have passed as, as I would come and review it every once in a while. This is really making sense. Then it goes on to say, the ones in the assembly who had remained in their mortal bodies lamented and cried to the transformed ones to help them, but were told, it's now too late. The bridegroom has come, you see? It's pre. The bridegroom has come for us, and there is nothing we can do for you in this regard. However, if you will not love your own life, not bow to the will of the man of sin, and take that seal of his, you will join us after the celebration. You will be sealed by your death and kept in the throne room of the Lord God. Well, we see that as well, don't we? Revelation chapter 7, right? We see that. Those that from chapter 5, those that were ending up being sacrificed and so forth. 
They're under the throne saying, Lord, when are you going to avenge us? Okay? So once this period is over, there they are, resurrected or, or brought before the throne. And then it goes on. And it says, In what seemed a moment later, I was in another similar assembly in maybe another country. There also, in that instant, trans the, the instant transformation had taken place in many... Okay, what does that say? I was in another country. There also, the instant transformation had taken place of many. I was told that this event had happened all over the earth and all born-again, spirit-filled followers of Jesus had thus been transformed at whatever spot they happened to be in that instant and were joined by many of God's holy ones from the dawn of creation up to this present time. Then, here it comes, then suddenly some heavily armed police or soldiers burst into the meeting and proceeded to beat, shoot, and, and arrest the believers. A little blonde transformed lady stood up to one of the large men and refused to be moved when told she was under arrest. Five or six huge men tried to drag her away, but they could not move her any further than they could move an ancient redwood or oak tree. This infuriated the police, and they started to beat her and started and to start shooting their weapons. The bullets went right through their transformed bodies and made holes in the walls, or in some cases, struck and killed some of the mortals standing behind them. The blows seemed to go through also and have no effect whatsoever on the new resurrection bodies. The, mortal, uh, the remaining mortals were dragged off to prison along with some of the transformed ones who chose to go along, there was no sure way to tell at first glance who was mortal and who lived in a transcendent res resurrection body. So what's taking place during this 40 days? There it is. Before the tribulation begins, as we read in Luke 17 a moment ago, that they are here with him, that they're experiencing this during his testing, during, during this time of being rejected. It's before the tribulation begins, and he's talking about a group also being taken to prison. And look at what we have. But before all these, same period of time as I just said, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. And you shall be betrayed by both parents and brethren and kinfolk and friends, and some of you they shall cause to be put to death. Okay? There it is. But not to worry, not a hair of your head's going to perish, because as soon as you're put to death, you won't feel it. You're instantly going to be there at the throne. Guys, this is part of the 40 days. Something is instantly going to change. And these guys are going to know that something has changed. These guys are going to know with the enemy side, right? They're going to know and they're going to come after these spirit-filled people. Then it says, and then also in a, uh, I was then also in a prison and saw how the immortals were confronting the anguished souls who were to be executed unless they denounce the name of Jesus. The guards and all governmental authorities, see, just like in Luke 21, were furious that they could do absolutely nothing to prevent the glorified believers from coming and going and ministering anywhere on earth, wheresoever Jesus told them to go. 
No wall could hem them in, and no weapon or human force could oppose or harm them. One of the transformed saints who had lived ages ago on earth spoke, Within 40 days, all who refuse to accept the seal of the evil one will be killed and kept safe by my father personally in the throne room. Okay? The seal, the mark is going to start with these guys. But all who refuse, even in this short period of time, you see, just again, it goes back to what we were saying in Luke 21. Why on earth during this 40-day period are some of these people about to be put to death? Something has drastically changed. Yet it's still only the 40 days and the tribulation will still not yet have begun. That's wild. Okay? Uh, in the throne room, those who give in will suffer the terrible wrath beginning after the last saint is murdered. This is the Lord uh this wrath is the Lord's last effort to get rebellious mankind to repent. And then he goes on to when he woke up and so forth. How is that? It's called it's from the website lastofdays.co.za forward slash other forward slash rapture. All right. You see, in the past, I, I had questioned whether this was pre or whether this was post. Now, I think you guys can see with more clarity, just like I can. Everything I reflected or, or connected, I should say, to this was the 40 days in Luke, was the transfiguration story as the type and shadow when the Lord comes at the 40 days. It was Luke 21, but before all these, which we've been teaching about for over two years, is the 40 days, All right? We see this group that's also working, right? That That's going to end up in the throne room. And when we look at Luke 21, we see things like, and some of you they shall cause to be put to death. This group, you see, the group that works the 40 days, as you saw, if that, if, if we're to take that, that vision dream as an understanding, which to me, if I'm still talking about it and knowing what we know, I think maybe there's some validity there, especially as we've come to understand there's there's more going on. There's, there's another group here, all right? There's a group for 40 days. Well, here's the thing. There's a group that goes after the 40 days, and remember, they can't be killed. So it's not them being put in prison, they're willingly go to prison to give these guys a little encouragement, right? Because of what they're going to have to endure. But there's others around the world who are still going to be remaining as well, who are part of these guys. And there's going to be some of them as disciples being killed. This is going to take place not only during the 40 days, but it's going to continue, obviously, into seals. Okay? And that's what we were talking about. Check this out. Now, I haven't spoken about this in quite a while. I've mentioned it a little bit in passing, but never fully spoken about it for a long time. And that is the 144,000. Everybody that studied this knows that, of course, it's 12,000 and 12,000 and 12,000, right? 12,000 times 12,000. There's 144,000 that are chosen to work trumpets, okay? It's the 144,000. But we know Levi is one of the groups of 12,000. Well, Levi, although Levi is a tribe, he does not have his own portion. He's a portion of everybody else's, okay? They're spread throughout all of them. Yet Levi is here. There's a reason. The next we see is Joseph. Well, Joseph 
should not be there either. He's stepping in for somebody. You see, Joseph had what? Well, there was Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh, okay, Manasseh's there, but Ephraim's not there. Levi's there, but Dan isn't there. You see, Joseph stepped in for Manasseh, uh, for Ephraim, and Levi stepped in for Dan. We've, we've shared how in Zechariah, uh, sorry, Jeremiah chapter 4, we know Jeremiah chapter 4. We know that this is talking about the time as the tribulation is about to begin. Israel, Jerusalem is about to be attacked. And what do we see? A voice that declares from Dan and publishes from Mount Ephraim. Do you think it's a coincidence that Dan and Ephraim, the two missing tribes, in the 144 are mentioned there? Not at all. This is the worker group. There's another two sets of 12,000. And I've said it before. <clears throat> Some people think that maybe there's another 144,000 that's going to work during SEALs. I don't believe it. I've mentioned it a couple times as a possibility, but I don't believe it. These are the two missing from the 144. And I'm going to show you. I mean, you can go read the rest of Jeremiah chapter 4 for yourself. It's all about them having what? They're about to they're being surrounded. They're sounding the alarm and desolation is coming upon them in a moment. It actually sounds even like it might be bombs, you see, because they're going to be spoiled suddenly, instantly. In Luke 21, it says they're going to be compassed about. That's not the same. Okay? One is one is one type of destruction suddenly, and the other one is a compassing about before they're attacked. So you can go read this for yourselves. We, we've, we've talked about it a number of times. Now, seeing Dan and Eve from here, knowing that they're the two missing from the 144, knowing that then it could be a type and shadow of 12,000 and 12,000, have a look at this. Check this out. I haven't talked about this one in a long time. I mentioned it maybe a year or so ago when we were talking about that Messiah TV series. Because that Messiah TV series, there was a picture of the guy that plays Messiah. And I know people are going to say, no, it was the Antichrist. You got to understand how they, how they fooled people and twisted it. They got Christians saying it was the Antichrist. And they got Muslims saying it was the Antichrist. Oh, how is that possible? We know here how that's possible. Right? Because Messiah as the son of man who comes first, the remaining Christians for the 40 days person, the one who comes first, they're going to say that's the Antichrist. Because they've all been taught Antichrist comes first. They have no idea the son of man comes first. And the Muslims are all yelling, it's the Dajjal, don't listen to him. He's the Christian Antichrist. They say, wait for our two guys who will come next. And the real Jesus, the Muslims will say, will kill this guy. And then our other guy, the Mahdi, will rule. You see, they're two guys, Antichrist and false prophet. You following? They, they, will, they will start to show up, but they will not really begin instantly. All right? We know that from, from the discourses. But they will be here. And they will be in power. So anyways, last time I spoke about this was that Messiah show. And it was really strange how there was an image that showed up on the screen of this guy playing Messiah. And there was a C and a dash and one, uh, uh, 136. And it was the strangest thing that it caught my attention. And the reason is because I had studied this, oh, maybe a year prior. And the reason I studied this is because this story of Rabbi Akiva, who allegedly took part in the what? The revolt. It was the Jews, the Roman persecution in Judea, right? It was, what did they say? Uh, it was the last of three major Jewish-Roman wars. How long did it last? Four years. 
Isn't that interesting? So there's a group with this rabbi. And the great rabbi, you got to remember, this was back in uh, the first century. Okay, the first going into the second century. So it was it was right in that time, actually, just like you saw. This is 132 to 136 AD. Okay, so that's why I said when I saw that image of Messiah and it was C-136, it was interesting that they had that. Man, I'm telling you, that thing is so full of, 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 of revelation and, and little clues within that show. And 136 was on one of those pictures. And so I knew how it related to this. You see, it even talks about Akiza's desaccord. Um, Romans in executing him would be quite inexplicable. So they talk about how these guys died, that there was persecution. But you find out that his group was 24,000 disciples. 24,000 disciples. And their time was in the first or going into the second century AD. Now, why does that matter? Because one of my favorite charts is the end time church is revealed in the churches that were in the churches that they represent to modern day to the churches that are to come the end of day churches. We've got a great video on that. It, it was awesome. The revelation that it gave us. And so those 24,000 were killed. When was that period of time? During this one here, when church persecution really started getting bad before it gets crazy bad when Antichrist gets his power to continue, this persecution that will still be going on during the first half of seals is Smyrna. What does Smyrna say about those being persecuted during that time? Some of you they shall cause to be put to death. Those, those that were empowered for the 40 days, they're not dying. They leave with the Lord. It's the Lord, it's those who will remain who, who don't have the supernatural bodies during the 40 days and will still remain after the 40 days to endure seals. They are the sum of you who are dying. And you can see them right here, the exact same reflection of them with Smyrna when it says, fear none of those things which shall come, which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you shall be tried and have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Why? Remember, he that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death. Who is this group? The martyrs. They are the Smyrna martyrs who will be resurrected when the Lord returns. They will be resurrected and will not be affected by the second death. They're going to live with them during the millennial reign. This group is not that group that got the 40-day power and got to leave. These are the ones that did not and had to endure. Pretty wild stuff, isn't it? We see where they're now going to then be before the throne. Still in heaven, their resurrected bodies won't be until the end. So here we have the missing Dan and there's Ephraim, which I just showed. We know that historical evidence tells us about Rabbi Akiva and his 24,000. Well, what more can we know about Dan? Or what more can we know about Ephraim? Well, I can show you a lot more for Dan than I can for Ephraim. Ephraim's a little bit more mysterious, but very fitting for those being killed during that portion of seals. I've done a teaching on this a long time ago, and I brought it up once in a while. There's this beautiful mystery revealed 
in the last chapter of Romans, the last chapter of 1 Corinthians, and the last chapter of 2 Corinthians. It's those who will work seals for the church age. The 144,000 is the type and shadow of those who are being sealed who are going to work during trumpets. And then finally, this is the third time when the Lord returns. It's, it's incredible. It's a fascinating revelation. And when you see what Romans 16 tells us, we see verse 3. Greet Priscilla and Achilla, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my own life laid down their own necks. Unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Why? Because five of the churches are Gentile and two are, 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 are Jew or, or Israel, all right, or Jewish. So it's all the churches of the Gentiles, but it's Priscilla and Achilla and those who are what? In their homes. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. They were doing house church. All right. They were building it when? In the beginning. From the start. Here's the story you can go read on Priscilla and Achilla. Priscilla and Achilla. You can see when Paul went to Ephesus, they stayed in Ephesus. And we read about it in Acts 18. I think this might be slowing my computer down. And we read about it, and I'm going to show you that in Acts 18. But you see that they laid down their own necks. They did it for the Gentile churches. That's the tribulation, right? During the seals, because they're laying down their necks. And they're the ones out of their house. Well, they remained in Ephesus. And look at what Achilles' name means. An eagle. His symbol is in the sky as well, right? Aquila, the eagle, which is the constellation. Why? He is the good side of Dan. Dan has two representations. It's either a it's a scorpion, but it either remains on its belly as a snake or it overcomes and becomes an eagle. Aquila is the overcoming eagle tribe of Dan that works during seals. They put their necks on the line. And where did they stay? They stayed in Ephesus. Hello. When did they work? Their time was between this time right here. They were part of the revival. They were part of the building churches up in their homes, secretly going about. And guess what? They remained there and they were doing these things for, if I, if I understand it correctly, for about four years. And watch how I can prove it to you. <clears throat> you see, the last place we, we, talk, we hear talk about Priscilla and Aquila, they were also, they became martyrs, by the way, when you read it, uh, the history about it, about them. So it says, this is where Priscilla and Aquila, they had gone to through Syria and they were now going into Ephesus. Paul is with them. They stay in Ephesus and Paul goes on. Okay, that's where they remained in Ephesus. Ephesus is the beginning of tribulation at the time of the great revival. You see? And then we saw that group who are putting their necks on the line and those who are dying as a representation during that time of seals as the group represented as Smyrna. It doesn't mean that Ephesus is gone just because Smyrna is taking place. So as you read this and you get down to the, to the bottom of Acts 18, we read whom when uh, uh, Priscilla and Aquila, what had happened is Priscilla heard uh, Apollos, right? He was preaching in Ephesus and they expounded to him. Okay, they took unto him, uh, sorry, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Who? The eagle, the good side of Dan. 
And the last time we hear about them is right here in Acts chapter 18. And if you recall, we were talking about this four-year period that starts with these guys who start in Ephesus at the beginning of tribulation when the great revival is going to begin. And what do we get when we follow them in our chapters to years? They end in chapter 18 is the last time we hear them, which is what? The fourth year of tribulation. We no longer hear of them. Do you think this all happens by chance? <laughs> Does it just, it's just random that everything falls in its place, in its proper account of time in relation to these chapters to years, from the 40 days, from the escape. There's a group working and a group leaving that will be rewarded according to Scripture with their own kingdom, sitting and eating with him at his table. A group that then goes through the persecution of 40 days and remains during this first half of seals, during this time when the extreme persecution will begin. Man. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's everywhere, guys. It is such, it's so revealing. It's just awesome. I get so excited by these things. I pray that they bless you as well and that they bring you just as much as excitement as they do me. Because I'll tell you what, man, as we, as we grow in understanding, we draw closer and closer and closer. It continues to get more clear. Always. I say it every couple of videos at least. Every time a new piece or we go to something old that we were still uh, trying to figure out, but it, there was something going on to it. As a little bit more time passed and we were seeking in other things, we suddenly get led back to this thing that was still a little bit uncertain and clarity comes over and over and over again. You understand, there is no way this could have all happened by chance. It's absolutely impossible. And this could not have come to have been understood without first understanding that the end of days is two sets of seven for 14 years. And that could have never happened without first understanding who the Gospels are speaking to. It's the revelation of the opening of the books for the end of days. It is literally Daniel 12, 4, when he was told to shut up the books until the time of the end. For some reason, the Lord has chosen us for these last three and a half years, for all of us in all the corners of the earth that are listening, to understand, to draw closer. It's all about him, brothers and sisters. The whole book is him. Was, is, and is to come. It is all him. And the is to come is so important to get out to people now. There's not much time left. I know our family and friends just don't want to hear it anymore. I know it's a struggle for many of you out there. I get it. Believe me, I get it. The Lord blessed me with an incredible family with my wife and children to be able to do what I do without hearing complaining and whining and difficulties and all those things or nagging, naysaying and say, oh, you're crazy, you've lost your mind. I could have never done that if the Lord didn't give me my wife and children. And I'm very blessed for that. And I know it, and I let them know once in a while too. So, as I said at the beginning, and I've been telling you in the last couple of videos, I'm working on something in the background with a couple of others that is so last minute to be able to get done. I can't believe how far we've gotten so far. And I believe we can have it done within one more week. And then we'll put it all together and we'll make it available for everybody in whatever format it's possible. And as much as family and friends 
don't want to listen now, I'll tell you what, they'll be reaching for this. They will absolutely be reaching for this when you vanished. I love you guys. I pray for you. I pray for your families. I pray that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, will be sent upon all of our family and friends who are still sleeping or who have not yet opened their eyes. That the Spirit will be upon them, that not one will be lost or missed. That whether it be now, in time, for before all these things come to pass, or whether it be after, that not one would be missed. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless your families. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.